This video journal is on the reading from Kwame Anthony Apaya about the practices we have today and what future generations will condemn us for. Apaya writes that just like how we condemn the practices of generations before us, so too will we be condemned by generations that follow. For example, once upon a time, it was a man's duty to beat his wife and children to keep them in line, and in some countries it still is, but now we know that such a thing constitutes abuse. Homosexuals were killed, and the Catholic Church itself, supposedly a bastion of love, invented waterboarding. These and many other horrors are easy to recall and judge, Apaya says, but it is almost certain that we will be subjected to the same judgment in the future. Apaya encourages us to think about what practices we may be judged for. While there is no completely accurate way to determine these things, and as Apaya says, not every practice will be condemned, there are a few signs that most of these practices share in common. The first sign is that an argument against the practice has already been made and most people have heard it. Apaya references slavery to demonstrate this. Arguments against slavery didn't crop up the moment before they started writing the Emancipation Proclamation. They had long been eating away at the practice. The second sign, Apaya says, is that defenders of whatever the practice is seldom use moral counterarguments but instead cite things like tradition, human nature, or necessity. Providing another example from slavery, Apaya offers, we've always had slaves. How could we grow cotton without them? The third and final sign is the strategic ignorance of practitioners. Oftentimes, Apaya says, they try to ignore harsh truths and just not think about the issues of the practice. One common way is out of sight, out of mind. After establishing these three signs, he offers four contenders for condemnation. The prison system, industrial meat production, our treatment of the elderly, and the handling of our environment. Everyone already knows that our prison systems are horrible for everybody in them. Some psychologists even amount these conditions to torture, Apaya says. Another problem is that our prisoners make up an entire 1% of our population. That may seem small now, but we have the highest proportion of prisoners out of every other country in the world. In fact, we have a whole quarter of the world's prisoners. In addition, Apaya says, most of our prisoners are nonviolent offenders caught for drug charges. To make matters worse, over 100,000 prisoners suffer from sexual violence each year, some even contracting life-threatening sexually transmitted diseases like HIV. Next is factory farming. In as early as the 18th century, a man named Jeremy Bentham concluded that the suffering of animals is a greater factor in how they should be treated than their lack of the ability to reason. Those who eat factory farmed meat seldom think of the suffering of the animals they are consuming if for no other reason than that they simply cannot provide sufficient moral justification for it. An entire ninth of our country's 90 million cattle at any given time are packed into cramped feeding pens pumped full of antibiotics to prevent the disease that would certainly run rampant otherwise. They are often surrounded by their own waste with no ways of escaping it. In most European countries, these conditions are already banned, Apaya says, and they will soon be banned here as well. The treatment of, of elderly in this country, and many others, is truly horrible. Two million are hidden away in nursing homes, out of sight and out of mind for the rest of us. Over 10,000 profitable facilities have been built for this purpose, and even those that do not live in homes are often isolated from their families. It's difficult to keep family close when we may have jobs far away, but the signs of condemnation are here all the same. We know it's wrong for the elderly with large families to suffer in isolation, but we usually just try to push the issue out of our mind. We have no moral defense for this treatment. Finally, we have the environment. Climate change and the destruction of our natural resources and environment are issues we all know well. In some areas, it has gotten so bad that the land has become unlivable. For example, in the 1990s, Europe recognized a stretch of Russia, which was previously rich with life and vegetation, as its first entirely man-made desert. This desertification is a huge problem in China as well, with tens of thousands of villages affected. Personally, I think that our treatment of the environment will be what we are most condemned for, but the others will probably be used against us as well. We already have large-scale talks on how we can save the planet. There are certainly conversations on the prisons and meat industries as well. The only thing that may slip under the radar for me is the issue with our treatment of the elderly. I think that we're very good at shoving it out of our thoughts so that it may be quite a while before that particular situation is remedied. 
I think some of the advancements we're making in regards to clean energy and stuff like that are promising, but they're moving a little too slowly. Or just recently though, a guy discovered plastic eating bacteria that can be used to clean up the ocean, so that's really cool. <clears throat> so my three questions are one, how many of these practices are you guilty of? How many are you able to push out of your mind and is it harder to do so after the reading? Two, did you disagree with any of Apaya's suggestions? Why? Additionally, what do you think some of the events going on in other countries in the world, such as the mistreatment of Muslims in China, or the use of child soldiers in African countries, among others? These are just examples. Feel free to pick your own. And third, did you learn anything from this journal and reading? And if so, will you do anything to try and stop or improve some of these practices in the future? Thanks.